Welcome everyone to MTG Deck Masters. Today we're taking a look at the top 5 most played decks in Pioneer right now. We're gonna start at number 5, my personal deck, Hidden Strings or Lotus Field Combo, which right now is 6.4% of the metagame. This list is very interesting because it does not even play Arboreal Grazer. Grazer is played in 65% of decks and then the rest, 35%, are playing White for Trick Proctor which is a 2-mana 1-3 with flying. Whenever a permanent entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability to trigger, counter that ability unless its controller pays 2. So essentially, it counters the trigger of Lotus Field when it comes into play. So you don't have to sacrifice 2 lands. And that's very powerful, because that allows you to play the Strict Proctor and then play Lotus Field directly. Of course, you will not pay 2 mana to sacrifice your 2 lands, so you get to keep your 2 lands, so then you can use all that mana to copy this, the Lotus Field with Thespian Stage and then go off from there. So it generates a lot of mana for you and saves your lands. Whereas Arboreal Grazer accelerates the number of lands you can play. But the issue with playing Strict Proctor is that now the deck gets weaker to removal since a turn 2 Strict Proctor can just be killed by a Fiery Impulse or Lightning Axe or whatever the opponent has, Bitter Triumph for example. Whereas Arboreal Grazer is mostly used as a chum blocker and accelerates your land drops. So this version is playing Strict Proctor. Another big downside is that you have a worse mana base. You need to play 4 copies of Mana Confluence and 4 Sparse Headquarters, which are much worse than all the other options in blue and green, like uh, Botanical Sanctum, which makes the mana base less consistent. And then the deck, how it wins is, of course, you need to copy Lotus Field with Despian Stage or just play another one. That's especially easy when you have Strict Proctor because you can just play Lotus Fields and not care if it's the first or second one since you don't have to sacrifice any lands. And then you untap them with Hidden Strings and uh, Poor Verda Pages that eventually have enough mana to cast Emerging Ultimatum or Dark Petition to get Emerging Ultimatum, which ultimately will result in you having Leer, Disciple of the Drowned, in play. So you can flash back all of your Hidden Strings and Poor Verda Pages, and then Ultimatum again to get Omniscience, then... Um, where is it? Fae of Wishes or Archduke's Charm to get the Fae of Wishes to then get Approach of the Second Sun out of your sideboard, cast it for free using Omniscience, and then search it up with Dark Petition or just draw into it with your Poor Veda Pages from the graveyard or even your Impulse, and then cast it again. And once you cast it for the second time, you win the game. So that's the new way, the new way. I say the new way, but the deck used to win with Approach of the Second Sun just years ago. Then it stopped because of Chandra Hope's Beacon. It also won with Peer into the Abyss for a while. But now the preferred win condition is Approach of the Second Sun because of Fae of Wishes in the main deck, which you have access to via Archdruid's Charm. So that's how most people win with this deck. Some lists still play Chandra in the main deck. Personally, I am on a very wild list that plays one Chandra in the main and one in the side for Fae of Wishes. But... I must be honest, that's because I didn't really try the Approach of the Second Sun win condition. I just really like Chandra and I haven't really changed my <laughs> win condition. I don't think it really changes much in how the deck works and its win percentage, but I guess people don't want to have one copy of Chandra on the main deck since sometimes it can be a bad draw, especially in your opening hand. And I tried Approach along with Chandra, but never really needed it. So I guess I'll have to try the version without Chandra in the main deck. But if you want my cyber guide for that, check out my Patreon. It will be in the pinned comment. So what's Lotus Field combo up to apart from playing Approach of the Second Sun and some list playing Strict Proctor? It's pretty much the same old thing. You're playing Hidden String, Silent Scrying, Balagate Recovery, Poor Red of Pages, Merging Ultimatum, 1-2 to two Dark Petition, 2-3 to three Impulse, 3-4 to four Arch Druid's Charm. Most people are playing 4 Charms and 1 Omniscience. Lions, you have 3 Baseju, 4 Lotus Field, 1 Odawara, 3 Thespian Stage, 1 Forest, 4 Botanical Sanctum, 2 Temple of Mystery, 1 Breeding Pool, 1 to 2 Hedge Maze, 1 Lair of the Hydra, 1 to 2 Yavimaya Coast, and sometimes 1 Zagat Trium. So I don't think this is a very accurate uh, breakdown of all the cards played in Lotus Field combo since it shows no list playing Strict Proctor and only 86% of decks playing Fae of Wishes. So you're I assume they're not telling me that only that some lists don't even have a win conditions or their only win condition is Lair of the Hydra. Uh, must not be true. So I think 
some lists still play Chandra, just like mine. Some lists don't play Fair of Wishes, so they're playing 1-2 to two Chandra in the main deck. And not all lists play a full playset of Arch Druid's Charm. So I assume that's the case. And then for the sideboard, most lists play two Temporary Lockdown. Great card against Burrows, Heroic, and Abzan Amalia, and creatures, decks with a lot of small creatures. Narset's Reversal, great against Is it Phoenix, Blue Eyed Control, and also the Mirror Match. Approach is a win condition. Voyaging Seder, here for fast decks that don't really have removal spells for cheap creatures. Dragon Lord Jamoka, great card against Is it Phoenix. Any deck with a bunch of counter spells or even small creatures. Silence for the Mirror Match and also Control decks and decks like Phoenix that play a bunch of spells in a turn. Mystical Dispute for any deck playing blue. Immersion Ultimatums in your sideboard for Fae of Wishes. Zakama and Realm Cloak Giant are cards that come in uh, in the matchups where they're good at because you can search them, them up with Archer's Charm. Unauthorized exist, Exit is here to replace Perilous Voyage, which is a card that's really good to bounce cards like Ashiok, but also uh, creatures against Boros Heroic, where the opponent goes all in to pump that creature. You can just bounce it back to their hand. And then you have Sunfall, which is a really good sweeper against any small creature deck, but also against rack those and even against phoenix because it exiles all their phoenixes so that's lotus field combo that number four with 6.5 percent of the metagame we have mono black discard and this is a waste not deck this deck was really fringe for a while in pioneer but now it's finally getting played a lot this deck plays a bunch of interaction a lot of discard spells and very few threats only four creatures three shield dread and one aklazot's deepest betrayal for lands, you have two Hive of the Eye Tyrant, then four Castle Lock Twain, two Demolition Field, four Field of Ruin, three Gary Reach Sanitarium, which is great with Waste Knot because it triggers Waste Knot every single time you activate it, two Sunken Citadel to activate your fields and Demolition Fields easier, and then you have Wonderborg Eight Swamps. The deck then plays a bunch of interaction. It has Cling to Dust, Duress, Fatal Push, Thought Seize, Bitter Triumph. Children's Edict, four copies of Go Blank, which is really powerful against both Lotus Field combo, but especially Is It Phoenix, which is a really popular deck right now, and two copies of Extinction Event, which is great against small creature decks like Abzan Amalia, two Reckoner Bank Buster, great card in the Mirror Match and other grindy matchups because it draws a lot of cards. Sideboard, this one has Duress, Knight of Dust Shadow, which is really good against Abzan Amalia because their combo revolves around gaining life. Rickner Bank Buster for grind your matchups. Unlicensed Hearse for Phoenix, because exiling Phoenixes with this is just so good. It's incredibly hard for them to win if you can exile their Phoenixes with the Hearse. Ashiok, also great against his Phoenix to exile their Phoenixes, but also against Lotus Field, since it stops them from searching their deck with Emergent Ultimatum, Sylvan Scrying, and Arch Druid's Charm, as well as Dark Petition. And then you can exile their win conditions by with the minus one. And then you have Necromantia for Lotus Field combo, but also Phoenix. Path of Peril for small creature decks like Abzan Amalia. Extinction Events, same here. And Kalidas, also great against any small creature deck. And then the list played two to three copies of Liliana of the Veil. So finally, the card is getting played a lot in one deck. It used to be played as a one or two of in Ragdos mid range, but now the, the card is becoming a pioneer staple. Slowly but surely, you're also going to see in the number one deck in just a second. And then the, leck, the deck also plays the Meat Hook Massacre which is a card that was banned in Standard, but didn't really make any waves in Pioneer. Here we are, it's a 1 to 2 of in most lists. Well, most lists, 41% of lists. And then all lists play a full play set of Waste Knot, because how could you not with a deck full of discard spells? You have Liliana, Duress, Thoughtseize, Go Blank, and even Gary Reach Sanitarium. And the sideboard, you have some more discard spells, and some lists also play Invoke Despair. For grindier matchups and some lists also play graveyard trespasser which is pretty good against is it phoenix if if they don't kill it that is that's mono black discard a deck that slowly but surely climbed up climbed up the ranks in the pioneer metagame but now it's finally in the top five at number three we have abzan amalia combo it's the deck i hate playing against the most because it's incredibly fast and if you're not playing a bunch of cheap removal spells you're gonna get absolutely smashed by this deck it's an infinite combo with Amalia, Benavide, Zaguire, and Wild Growth Walker. So all you need to do once you have these two cards on the battlefield is to either gain life or explore. So when you explore, it triggers the Wild Growth Walker. 
So you put a counter on it and you gain life and then that triggers Amalia since you gain life. So Amalia explores, but then Amalia explores. So that triggers Wild Growth Walker. So the deck gains a bunch of life. Amalia's power gets boosted up all the way to 20. It destroys all creatures and then attacks for 20 and the opponent is dead. So that's that's the, how the combo works. Then the rest of the deck is either a bunch of cards that gain life, explore, or simply good creatures. And also cards like Court of Calling, Collected Company, and Return to the Ranks, which gives the deck a lot of card advantage. And also uh, tutors for their missing combo pieces. So it plays two Cenote Scout, Haywire Might, Lunark Veteran, Selfless Savior, Fauna Shaman, which is a really good tutor card for the combo pieces. Then four Prosperous Innkeeper, one Extraction Specialist. One Sentinel of the Nameless City and one Skyclave Apparition, along with one Aetherflux Reservoir. Uh, some lists also play Dina, Soul Steeper, two copies of Voice of Resurgence, and uh, that's pretty much it. So you have a lot of options in these colors to play utility creatures, depending on which decks you're expecting. If you expect a lot of Blue-White Control, Voice of Resurgence is really good, but Blue-White Control has really fallen off in popularity in the last month. As of now, it's the number six most played deck, but it used to be the number two or even number one sometimes. And then for spells, you have Thought Seas, Collected Company, Return to the Ranks, Court of Calling, and also Aether Flux Reservoir can also allow you to win without attacking with Amalia, so that's really important. Then for lands, you have the classic Shock Lands, Blooming Marsh, Reservage Ticket, Mana Confluence, then 1 to 2 Basajus, Takenuma, and then Scattered Groves as a one of. Then in the sideboard, you have Knight of Dust Shadow, which is great in the mirror match. Thought Seize for control decks and also Lotus Field, which is already one of your best matchups since you're much faster and they don't have interaction for your combo. Fatal Push for other creature decks like the mirror match. Sentinel, the Nameless City for a grandeur matchups. Archon of Emeria, great against Lotus Field combo. Tamiyo Safekeeping for some protection on your creatures if the opponent plays a lot of removal spells like Ragdoll's Vampires. Haywire Might, Lauren of the Third Path to interact with artifacts and enchantments. Painful Truth for grindy matchups, draw some cards. Raidane, God of the Worthy for decks with expensive spells like Lotus Field, Combo. Collected Company for grindy matchups with a bunch of spot removal. And Skyclave Apparition for some additional removal of your own since you don't want to dilute your deck with too many, too many instants and sorceries for your Collected Company to brick or hit only one creature. So that's Abzan and Malia combo. Right now, it's 9% of the metagame. Now, let's move on to the top two decks, which are really dominating the format right now. It's not even close. With double the metagame share, we have Is It Phoenix at 17.9%. So, pretty much double the metagame share of Abzan and Malia. The deck's been around forever in Pioneer. It fell off the map and then came back with the printing of Sleight of Hand. And Picklock Prankster just made things even better for Is It Phoenix. And even though the metagame now is full of cards like Ashiok, Dream Render, and Unlicensed Hearse, and so many others, Phoenix is still dominating. It's still a really good deck. I'm not a big fan, though, of playing that kind of strategy because the entire deck is full of air, and sometimes if you don't fight your, your Arclight Phoenix, the deck just doesn't do anything. So I'd much rather be a combo deck if I'm going to play all these cantrips uh, rather than a deck that puts 2-3-2 two, two Flying Haste on the battlefield. <laughs> but people are having a lot of success with it. As a Lotus Field player, I'm finding this hilarious because my matchup is ridiculously good. But the deck has a lot of good matchups in the metagame and it's a really good deck. People are really complaining about it because it's abusing Treasure Cruise, especially with Galvanic Iteration. It becomes really broken. And of course, Treasure Cruise is on a whole other level compared to everything else in the format. And they want it banned. So that's why people are speculating it will get banned in the March ban and restricted announcement. And I'm not so sure it will happen because of one deck that's taken over the metagame and is now a lot more popular than Nezet Phoenix. Now, nobody plays Thing in the Ice anymore in this deck. Some lists play one Brazen Borrower, but most of the time it's four Phoenix, four Picklock Prankster, and four Ledger Shredder. And now one to two Ashiok in the main deck. That's to fight the mirror match, but also Lotus Field combo. It's one of the best cards against that deck. And it gives you a chance for once, because in the past, this deck had no chance, especially game one against Lotus Field. But now with 1-2 to two Ashiok and all the cantrips, it has, um, it has maybe a chance to win game one. Then cantrips, you have 4 Consider, 4 Opt, 4 Sleight of Hand, and then 4 Treasure Cruise. 
one to two spell pierce main deck then for interaction you have three to four fire impulse and lightning axe around one temporal trespass most of the time and one galvanic iteration then for lands you have some islands two to three most of the time and then two hall of storm giants four steam vents one otawara four spiral of canal four river glide pathway and one storm carved coast Sideboard, you have Mystical Dispute for the mirror match, but also Lotus Field combo and Blue White Control. Crackling Drake for grindy matchups, because if they exile your Phoenix, then you can't do much. You can't bring it back. So Crackling Drake just is that card. You put it in play. And if they don't answer it, they're probably dead on the next turn. And then you have Negate for Lotus Field combo and other spell-based decks. Anger of the Gods for decks with small creatures like Abzan Amalia. You can also exile Phoenixes with that. And then you have Ashiok Dream Render. For the mirror match and lotus field combo brotherhood's end for other small creatures similar to anger of the gods brazen bower note that brotherhood's end does not exile your phoenixes but if you have phoenixes and playing your anger of the gods then you will lose them they have young pyromancer this can put some pressure on combo decks like lotus field combo where your phoenixes are just not quick enough to kill them before they get their combo going even if you have an ashiok in play um, the opponent can win through it or find an answer before their your phoenix has killed them. So having more pressure in the form of Young Power Mancer can really be helpful. And you have Aether Gust for any red or green decks and a Braid for some more removal. So that's Is It Phoenix. Now number one in the Pioneer metagame right now with 20.5% of the metagame. It's Ragdose Vampires. So there's no Ragdos mid-range and no blue-white control right now in the top five decks. It's all Vampires. And this deck is now even more popular than Is It Phoenix. We have 534 tournament finishes in the past month, whereas we have 466 with Is It Phoenix, and only 234 with Amalia, which is the third most popular deck. So if you're going to play in a Pioneer tournament, expect to face Ragdos Vampires a lot. This deck's pretty similar to the traditional Ragdos Midrange decks, except it now uses Soren Imperious Bloodlord, to minus three and put a vein ripper directly into play which is six mana for six five flying ward sacrifice a creature whenever a creature dies target opponent loses two life and you gain two life that's pretty powerful with soren because you can also plus one sack a vampire and it deals three damage any target you gain three life and with vein ripper whenever creatures die creature dies the opponent loses two you gain two so that's that puts the opponent on a significant clock it's incredibly hard to beat and it comes into play on turn three and the rest of the deck is the traditional stuff you see in blue and blue white in ragdos mid-range blood tide harvester shieldred preacher of the schism even three copies of dusk legion zealot which is great to sacrifice to soren's plus one ability since you already got the value by the time it came into play and then you have of course four soren and then duress fatal push thought seize bitter triumph and fable of the mirror breaker you have 25 lands so the deck is more mana intensive now since you want to sometimes you want to cast your vein rippers but also shield red's pretty expensive soren three mana fable three mana and then the rest is quite efficient at one and two mana for the interaction then for sideboard this list has duress for phoenix and blue white control and lotus field combo damping sphere for lotus field but also phoenix ashiok for phoenix and lotus field blot out that's too generic in a black for an instant target opponent exiles a creature or planeswalker they control with the greatest mana value among creatures and planeswalkers they control I assume that's good in the mirror match for Vein Ripper. Liliana of the Veil, vale, Path of Peril, and Leyline of the Void as a full playset. So Leyline of the Void really good against Phoenix because then they can't do much. And if they already have their Phoenix in play and you just hard cast Leyline of the Void, then you kill their Phoenixes and they become exiled. So they, they can't really do much against that. And if the opponent casts hard casts a 4-mana Phoenix... A 3 2 flying, but then you just bitter triumph for fatal push the Phoenix, and then it can't come back, it just gets exiled. So, Lena is really powerful against Phoenix. And then uh, for lands, you have the Black Blight Step Pathway, Blood Crypt for four of Muna Vault has a four of which is also a vampire, so you can sack it to the Sauron. Then you have Black Leaf Cliffs as a four of High of the Eye Tyrant, Sulfur Springs, Cavern of Souls, which can invite vampire, of course, and Takenuma Abandoned Mire. And in the sideboard, some lists are also playing Graph Digger Skate, which is really good against Phoenix, one of the decks that's traditionally good against mid-range decks like Ragdos. So that rounds out the current Pioneer metagame. Let me know in the comments which deck do you think is the best position 
And what do you think about the place of Lotus Field combo in the current metagame? And do we see traditional Rakdos midrange decks coming back? And perhaps do you think we will see a Treasure Cruise ban or a Vein Ripper slash Sauron ban coming soon? Because people have been talking about it. And these two decks combined are almost 40% of the metagame. So if you don't like playing against them, you're going to have a miserable time in Pioneer. Personally, I really like playing against Is It Phoenix because I play Lotus Field combo and it's my best matchup. Uh, maybe not if they have Ash Ashiok in the main deck, but even then I have plenty of ways to win through that. And Ragdoll's Vampires, sure, it's not a really good matchup, but at least it's interesting. So let me know what you think about the current Pioneer meta, and I will talk to you guys later.